What's going on guys, my name is Charles and this is the Traders Corner. Today we're going to be talking about a topic that was actually requested in the comments of one of our other videos. So let's get started. So today we're talking about this idea of using both technical and fundamental analysis. Now, this is a concept that I know I've talked about before in the past um, and maybe just haven't made a dedicated video to the topic, right? And so let's quickly talk about using technical and fundamental analysis as it relates to trading. Now, like I was saying before, there's technical fundamental analysis. There's different ways that you can do this technical and fundamental analysis. You can even use algorithms to do that technical or fundamental analysis. Like you could build an algorithm to do technical analysis. You could also build an algorithm that reads research reports or, you know, anything like that and kind of gives you a sentiment of that report. There's a lot of stuff that you can do with coding as it relates to technical analysis, fundamental analysis, but just sticking with technical analysis and fundamental analysis and removing coding from it. If we understand it, what is technical analysis? Well, obviously technical analysis is using the charts, right? We're using the charts, we're using our charting tools, we're using fib retracements and support and resistance and all these different things and all these different topics that you've heard about as it relates to technical analysis. Now, what is fundamental analysis? Well, fundamental analysis is actually a little bit different for each asset class. You have different asset classes like stocks, bonds, commodities, you know, real estate, all this kind of stuff, right? Um, and maybe real estate isn't a good example for day trading, but maybe like crypto is another one, right? And so fundamental analysis analysis looks very different for different asset classes, right? For example, stocks, the fundamental analysis is probably just going to be that 10K or the 10Q or looking at some different macro environment uh, type data, right? Or maybe for commodities, it's really all you care about is the macro maybe, or maybe you're looking at the weather, or maybe you're looking at the supply of, you know, corn in the market right now, all this kind of stuff, right? There's different things, there's different fundamental data for different asset classes. So that's the first thing I will call out as it relates to fundamental data. You have to understand the asset class that you're trying to trade because you have to understand which fundamental data or what fundamental data is important to that asset class, right? Because not all fundamental data is made the same, just the same way that not all technical analysis is made the same, right? And so, for example, what do I mean by not all technical analysis is made the same? Well, I think a good thing that I heard when I got started in trading, and I think it's something that people need to talk about more, is this idea of not all asset classes. So for example, stocks versus Forex, right? They do not move the same. Generally, you see stocks tend to trend more than a Forex pair does, whereas a Forex pair tends to range more than a stock does, right? So trend following systems tend to work better with stocks or stock related things, whereas range bound systems tend to work better with Forex. This is not hard and fast rules, but understanding the trends and the patterns and the things that you trade from a technical perspective can actually be very beneficial too. Now, how do we put these two things together and use them to trade comprehensively? Now, this is something that I try to practice myself and I think it makes a good trader just in terms of understanding what's happening behind the scenes. But I will say this, and this is something that I often hear from my friends who are very, very, very partial to technical analysis. They often say the chart leads the fundamental data or the chart leads the news. And I'm not going to say they're wrong. I'm, I've had that experience a lot of times, but if you're like me, and you like to understand why something happened, then understanding the fundamental data that went behind some chart move is actually very beneficial to you. And it's not only about scratching my itch of knowing why something happened, but think about this. If in the future, right, we run into another pandemic, or we run into a, God forbid, another great financial crisis, wouldn't it be nice to be able to say to yourself, not only do you know how the chart looked before X, Y, and Z happened, right? but you know the type of fundamental data that was coming through into the market and the way it looked different. Maybe the fundamental data doesn't look the exact same, but you know that it looks weird because you know fundamental data well. And you can throw on top of the idea that the chart is telling you something with the fact that the fundamental data looks weird and maybe you can position yourself you know, for the next whatever big crash or whatever big pop in the market or whatever might happen, right? It's understanding all of those things it makes it easier to have better gut reactions and gut decisions and better intuition in the market as you get deeper into it right because for example i understand technical analysis i've been learning to trade myself for about five years now and i've been using technical analysis that entire time i've also been learning a lot of fundamental analysis and how that relates to different asset classes and learning more how to better analyze that and because of that 
I always feel very comfortable trusting my gut when things start to go wrong in the market, right? Because I'm not only making a decision based off just a chart and I'm not only making a decision just based off some fundamental data, I'm making a decision based on both. And I know I'm making an informed decision based on both, right? And for example, and this isn't me bragging, but it is something that happened. I was able to get out of the market right before that crash that happened before the pandemic. And it was really just a gut feeling. I just had a feeling that I didn't want to leave this money that I had sitting on the table open. I knew going home. I had this discussion with one of my teachers as well. He said, there's a lot of leverage in the system right now. There's more leverage in this. There's about the same amount of leverage in the system as there was, you know, kind of pre 2008. So just kind of be wary of that. Right. And this was he said this to us right before we went home for the pandemic. Right. And him saying that I said to myself, I'm out. I'm done. I need to get out. I went flat, completely flat and the market crashed. And then I was able to use that money that I had just gotten flat with to get back into the market at really bargain prices. Right. So I know my gut's right sometimes. I'm not going to say that I do this right every single time. I've definitely made mistakes. I've definitely made decisions that I regret and I've gotten out too early sometimes or I've gotten out too late. But I know I can trust my gut because I have a good mix of both fundamental and technical analysis understanding, right? So that's been the video on t understanding technical analysis and fundamental analysis and how you can use them together in trading. And really what I would do as it relates to trying to learn this more or get better at this is understand, pick an asset class that you want to learn more about or you want to trade more of. So you can start to understand that asset class more from a fundamental perspective. And on top of that, you can focus your technical analysis on said asset class. Because again, like I said, not all asset classes move the same. So understand that, just spend some time with it. And the main thing that I'll say as well in terms of learning more about technical analysis and fundamental analysis, well, really just fundamental analysis, is don't be afraid to read the talking heads or watch the talking heads on Bloomberg, CNBC, all this kind of stuff. And I'm not saying that you watch them or listen to them or read their stuff and then just parrot or do what they say, but them, what they talk about, that's how you find what's actually important to other people, to big people in the markets. The, the data points that they talk about that they're looking at, these are things that you need to learn how to look at yourself, right? Where to find that data? Because a lot of this data is open and free and they, they just have access to it quicker than me and you do. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope it provides some value to you guys and join us again next time. Thank you.